So what are these some of the effects due to climate change and why would we as Canadians care about this? Especially why would we as youth care about this in somewhere so remote as the Arctic? Yeah. Well, what happens in the Arctic really affects us all. No one who knows anything about climate has argued all of climate is human. But we can pinpoint that things have been going very oddly over the last 100 years. We can pinpoint this to this is human related. This is not part of natural variability. And we've seen some striking changes. Uh, we've shown using our fossil methods, we've shown that the uh, climate started changing about a hundred years ago and it's been accelerating. So we often refer to the Arctic as the uh, sort of like the miners canaries of the planet. It's the first to show signs of environmental change to the greatest degree. Every time you see a lake and pond, it contains a history of that environment. And that's because lakes slowly fill with mud. 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year, lake slowly fills with sediment at the bottom of the lake. That becomes like a history book or a time machine. The deeper you go, the older it is. We have ways of removing that history book and also looking at the information contained in those layers. There's all sorts of information at the bottom of the lake. There's fossils of what lived in lakes. They're just tiny. They put hundreds on a head of a pin. But some of these species like cold water, some like warm water, some like lots of ice, some don't like much ice. Uh, some like acid water, some like alkaline water, some like polluted water, some don't like polluted water. Since we know what these organisms require, and we can find their fossils going down in history, we have independent ways that we can date how old it is. We can say this is the 1820s, this is the 1750s, this is 500 years ago. We can see how these organisms' assemblages have changed over time. And by looking at that, we can reconstruct how the environment has changed. And we've been sampling a series of ponds and lakes near Cape Herschel. And we've been working on these about 40 ponds going back since 1983. Based on our fossil analysis, we could show that yes, indeed, the climate has been changing over the last century. And we couldn't link it to natural causes. It seemed to be linked to humans. And we made the predictions that if this warming continues, eventually these ponds, which we knew have been their permanent water bodies for thousands of years, would simply evaporate away. Well, that prediction came true over the last decade or so. We slowly watched these ponds change and they got shallower and shallower and we were also monitoring the water chemistry and as time went by they were getting a little saltier, a little saltier and that's exactly what you'd expect. It's like putting a pot of soup on the stove and taking the lid off and leaving it at low heat. If you watch your pot of soup, two things happen. One, the soup level goes down as the water evaporates. We can see that happening in our ponds over the years. If you keep tasting your soup, it's getting saltier and saltier. That's because the water is evaporating away and the salts are being left behind. We were measuring the salt each year very carefully and we could show the steady increase in salt. Well, starting in about 2006 or so, the ponds, some of these ponds started evaporating completely. So these were ecosystems that have been there for thousands of years and now they're gone. Even worse, perhaps, when you're on Cape Herschel, is the wetlands. Wetlands are very important, especially in Arctic regions. They take in greenhouse gases, and they're very important ecosystems. Well, there's some wetlands near Cape Herschel, and we were watching those wetlands too. And back in the 1980s, these wetlands were full of water, still full of water, nice, healthy ecosystems, green. You come back in the last few years, they've so dried up they've died. Many of the plants have died in the wetlands. You can actually put a match to it and they'll burn. People have done very similar type of work on lakes all across the circumpolar Arctic, and I think we had over 50 examples right across. You know, it went from you know uh, Norwegian Arctic to the Russian Arctic. Uh, we had examples all over, and we could show the same types of changes happening across the Arctic. It's not something localized. It's not a Canadian issue. It's a circum Arctic issue.